Let's uh, welcome in our Ken Rosenthal live from Target Field. You're going to see him as part of the broadcast coming up here. Uh, Ken, it's always good to see you. Why suspended for this diuretic? Well, Chris, a player does not necessarily get suspended for using a diuretic. He only gets suspended if the independent program administrator, the person who runs the joint drug program, determines that the diuretic was used to mask the use of another prohibited substance. That is what happened here. This diuretic that Cano was using, he can say all along he wasn't using it for performance-enhancing purposes, but it was used to mask a performance-enhancing drug. That is why he got suspended. And frankly, Chris, he has to know better. He might say, as he did say, I didn't realize this was a banned substance. Come on. Every player knows where to find the list of banned substances. Every player knows you have to check with your club people before you put anything in your bodies. It's a pretty flimsy excuse. Yeah, already players and former players are questioning uh, his response, the honesty or candidness in that. So, Ken, you're a Hall of Fame voter. Seemed like Cano was on a path to the Hall of Fame. This has to jeopardize that. It does, Chris, with a certain segment of voters, no question. But keep in mind, five years on his contract after this season, and he may continue playing even after that. And then there's a five-year grace period before he even becomes eligible for the Hall of Fame. So we're talking at least 10 years down the line. And by then, there will be a number of younger voters coming in, voters who have at least been so far less forgiving of PED users. And keep in mind as well, the thinking of voters often evolves. And I can say that for myself. I now vote for Bonds and Clemens where I didn't before. So it's hard to say what's going to happen in the future, but certainly his chances today aren't as good as they were yesterday. Let's welcome in Tom Verducci. He'll be calling the game tonight, the Emmy Award winner, and congratulations on that. You've had some time to ponder this news. What's your reaction on the Robinson Cano suspension? Well, it was interesting. I wanted a player's perspective. I talked to Matt Carpenter, the Cardinals. I, I thought it was very instructive what he said from a player's point of view that you want to believe that Robinson's excuse that he was taking something, a diuretic for medical reasons, still took responsibility. But that's all there is to it. But he does say as a player, and I'm sure this is true of fans, Chris, that it makes you wonder what else is going on out there. That's why it's so disappointing. Now, I know a lot of people immediately talk about perhaps the Hall of Fame chances of Robinson Cano. I could argue he has Hall of Fame numbers right now, but based on the voting patterns we've seen so far, no one who has tested positive gotten close to getting elected to the Hall of Fame. Now he's got years left on his contract. It'll be at least 10 years before he's actually on a ballot. A lot of things can change between now and then. Who knows how the electorate will look at it? But as we stand today, it doesn't look like Robinson Cano's Hall of Fame career will wind up in Cooperstown. Yeah, and a bit of a twist. I know Jerry Depoto, the GM, said that D. Gordon from center field in Seattle may come in and play some second base. He was a past suspended player for 80 games. Yeah, and it was interesting because when they first thought Robinson Cano might be lost because of the broken bone in his hand for only about three or four weeks, they did not want to move D. Gordon. They had Gordon Beckham as a placeholder. But now that it's 80 games, I think Seattle will rethink the idea of moving D. Gordon to second base. They have more depth in the outfield than they do in the infield. 